Polarization. We've talked about the fact that electromagnetic ray waves have a, di a direction of the electric field, a direction of the magnetic field that's perpendicular, and then E cross B will give the direction of propagation. Um, but what I've kind of suppressed until now is the fact that a lot of sources like an incandescent bulb or the sun or other sources actually produce electromagnetic radiation with the electric fields directed in a variety of directions. So some of it will be E, B this way, some of it will be E, B this way, et cetera. And polarization is the process whereby we can isolate the electric field in a particular direction, which will isolate also the direction of the magnetic field. Um, an example first, or an application, the light reflected from the white regions of the, I don't know how to pronounce that kind of butterfly, is polarized. So this is seen in normal light, and this is seen through a polarizing filter. And we'll talk about these polarizing filters, which basically select out only the part of the, the radiation with the electric fields in a particular direction. So a very beautiful uh, butterfly that, takes, that happens to have a polarizing wings. So if the, if the wings are polarized, um, I, I don't know how the direction of, of polarization here, but let's say that these wings are, are only sending out electric fields that point in this direction, either this direction or this direction. Then if you put a, a filter that blocks out all of that electric field, um, so the filter would be this way, blocking out that uh, polarized light, then you don't see the wing very well. Okay, so this is a demonstration of what I'm talking about, the, um, using two polarizing filters. These are uh, polarizing filters, and what they do is that they have a, a particular direction in this material. There are polymers that are lined up in a particular direction and only allow electric fields to pass through that are aligned in that direction. Electric fields that are perpendicular to that direction get absorbed by the filter. And to demonstrate how this works, you can see already that it's, that it's a little bit dark. It looks like dark uh, colored sunglasses. Um, but it's more than just dark glass. It's, um, if, the two, if you put two polarizers together and their polarization directions are lined up, then most of the light passes through. Whereas if you rotate them 90 degrees, you can cut out almost all of the light. I think by now my face should have disappeared which is not a bad thing. And then as we continue to rotate them, we're bringing the two transmission directions into alignment with each other again. And Polaroid, I believe, was the first um, company that, that produced polarized lenses. And if you have... Um, you can find out if your lenses are polarized or not by taking one lens off and then turning it perpendicular to the other one and if the image disappears then you know they're polarized lenses. We can do the same thing by just taking these um, and, 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 and putting it in front of, of this other and then rotating and I think you can see that at this point the image goes completely dark through that lens. Now we're back to being able to see through it again. And um, so these are polarized lenses. These are just dark lenses uh, that are not polarized. And you'll see that the image does not depend on orientation. And so that's one way to tell. The uh, polarized lenses um, are polarized in the vertical direction so that um, light that's reflected from the surface glare, for example, on a rainy day, um, will get 
cut out by the vertical polarization. We'll talk more about that later. That's polarization. Okay. So as we've said, you've, a polarizing material is something that will select particular um, direction of the electric field. So the ana analogy here is that if you have a rope and you're jiggling this end of the rope, this slit that's vertical, we're doing uh, vertical motion of the rope, the rope can get through that slit. Whereas if I'm jiggling the rope vertically and I try and send it through a horizontal slit, that slit will cut out the vibrations and won't allow them through. Same thing with electric fields. Um, uh, electric fields passing through a polarizer the polarizer will select the uh, component of the total amount of light coming to it that has the electric field direction in the direction of polarization of the polarizer. All right, so um, in polarized light, the electric field fluctuates along a single direction, so that's polarized. And this is uh, unpolarized light that has electric fields in a in, uh, random variety of directions. All right, polarized light may be produced by passing unpolarized light through a polarizing material, as we've talked about. So the, the axis of this polarizer, there's always some axis to it. It's called a transmission axis. And it selects from this unpolarized light only the, the portion of it that has its, its electric field in that same direction. We've said that a bunch of times by now. So if the intensity of light is S, remember the intensity is denoted by S, not I, in this, um, for electromagnetic intensity. If it's unpolarized, completely randomly polarized, passes through a polarizing material, then the intensity of the light that makes it through is one half, as it turns out. And um, so state the intensity of light remaining after po unpolarized light of intensity S passes through a polarizing material. Well, we can just write it down. It's one half S. That's how much light is going to remain after passing through that uh, polarizing filter. Then Malice's law. This is a little bit more um, more involved. Start with unpolarized light again, uh, pass it through a polarizer, we get polarized light now. Now we're going to pass it through another polarizer. It's, it's the same as this polarizer here, but it's just turned at, at, a, at an angle and it's called an analyzer. And this analyzer uh, is at an angle theta with respect to the original polarization direction. How much of that light makes it through? Well, I think that you can guess the answer to two of these special cases. If theta equals zero, that means the analyzer and polarizer are parallel analyzer and polarizer are parallel. How much of the light should get through? Well, it should be all of it because they're in the same direction. Um, so it should have all light gets through. All right, let's see if that's true. This is the equation, Malice's Law, that gives the average intensity. Now, this is averaging out over the cycles of the wave, like we've talked about before. We've talked about average uh, current, average voltage, uh, RMS, uh, uh, the average power. For example, RMS courage, current, current, RMS voltage, average power. This is the average intensity, which is the average power per unit area. 
all right? The average intensity that makes it through that analyzer is, I'd say the average intensity is the average intensity um, before the analyzer. That's this S naught bar. That's how much average intensity is coming to the analyzer. S bar is the average intensity after the analyzer. So we've got uh, S naught bar coming in. And then we've got S bar coming out of this analyzer. How are they related to each other? A theta is the angle between the polarizer, polarization and the analyzer. Well, if theta equals zero, we think that all the light should get through. Does it? If theta equals zero here, then S, then cosine of theta, cosine of zero is zero, and cosine squared, I'm sorry, is one. Cosine of zero is one. Cosine squared of one is one. Um, so we just get that S bar equals S naught bar. And all the like it's through. Happy day. Well, what about the other case where theta equals 90? So now instead of this uh, analyzer being in the direction of the polarization, it's 90 degrees to the polarization. What would you guess about how much of that light would get through? And I think you'd guess that none of it would get through, and you would be absolutely right. If we put in 90 degrees here, cosine of 90 is 0, and 0 squared is still 0, so none of the light gets through for 90 degrees. All right, a uh, quick example. What value of theta should be used so the average intensity of polarized light reaching the photocell is one-tenth the average intensity of the unpolarized light? All right. First of all, how much of this unpolarized light gets through this polarizer? And you might remember that that's one-half. So here's, one, the, here's the one-half. That's what's going to pass through the polarizer. And we're told that one-tenth of the original intensity makes it through the polarizer, or the analyzer. So this is one-tenth. So this is S naught that's, that's the unpolarized light. After it goes through the polarizer, we're going to have half of that. Then, after it passes through this analyzer, we're going to have one-tenth of S naught bar. So, what we're going to do is apply Malice's law, which says that the intensity passing through the analyzer equals the intensity entering the analyzer times the cosine squared of theta. All right, here's the intensity getting through the analyzer. It's one-tenth. That's this number right here. Here's the intensity entering the analyzer, this number here, times cosine squared of theta. So just do a little bit of math. The S naught of these guys cancel each other. We multiply both sides by 2. 2 over 10 is 1 fifth. Uh, we get cosine squared of theta. To find theta from this equation, we're going to need to take the square root of both sides. Square root of cosine squared is cosine. That's this. Square root of 1 fifth is the square root of 1 fifth. And then we just take the inverse cosine to find the angle. That'll give the angle. Okay. Horizontally polarized light of intensity I. Um, so this problem has an I in it instead of an S. They're the same things. Is incident on a polarizer with its transmission axis oriented at 45 degrees. Determine the fraction of light intensity exiting the polarizer. This one's actually quite a bit easier than the last one. It's Malice's law again. The initial intensity is, is I. The angle is 45 degrees. 
cosine of 45 is square root of 2 over 2. Um, and the square of the cosine squared would be 2 divided by 4. That's 1 half. And so we just get 1 half of the original intensity if we're at 45 degrees. Pretty cool. Uh, as we talked about in the video, if you have two sets of Polaroid sunglasses, they're polarized in the vertical direction like this. Both sides of, of them are. And, and um, if you put them like this, you can actually see through, because both of them are polarized in the vertical direction. Whereas if you turn one to the side, then you get one that's polarized this way and one that's polarized that way. That's exactly the prediction of Malice's law that said that if theta equals 90 degrees, so this is theta equals zero that we talked about, and this is theta equals 90 degrees. And you get uh, no transmission. Uh, IMAX music movie projectors have uh, two different polarizations, one for the right eye, one for the left eye. And then the projector actually takes advantage of that. And so when you watch with these, um, with, with these special glasses that you take into the movie theaters, um, then you get to see these 3D images because what's presented to your left eye is different from what's presented to your right eye. And you get the sense of depth perception in a movie that otherwise wouldn't have any. Uh, in nature, light scattered from atmospheric particles and reflected from surfaces uh, is partially polarized. So if we have sunlight, which is unpolarized, as we talked about before, striking atmospheric molecules, you get polarized light. Um, or in fact, striking, um, striking a surface, like we talked about before. 